Hello, this is a deck profile on Mikanko. And while you may have seen I've already done one on this deck before, but my previous deck profile was not only made six hours after the archetype was revealed, but the archetype got a new card recently revealed. And that is Arabesque of the Mikanko, an incredibly strong equip spell that covers up most of the issues I had with the deck. And well, to sum it up, it has a few effects and it definitely resembles the of equip spells, but it's very strong. It has the standard, the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by card effects, but then during your main phase, you can special summon one Mikanko monster from your hand or deck with a different original name than the equipped monster, and if you do, equip with this card, then return to the hand the monster this card is equipped to. Now to note, this can equip to your opponent's monsters. So this is a removal card that can then summon a Mikanku from your deck, or can be used to summon a Mikanku from your deck using your own monster. So it's a very versatile consistency boosting card that triggers Mikanku's effects. Now as for the card by card, the two main deck monsters is Hair the Sword Mikanko and Nini the Sword Mikanko. Now Hair and Nini share the effect that if they are not equipped with an equipped card, you take no battle damage involving them, and if they are, then they cannot be destroyed by battle, whilst your opponent takes any battle damage you would take from battles involving them instead. As for Hare's effect, if it becomes equipped with an equip card, you can add one Bikanko equip spell from your deck to your hand, and it's harder with the turn. Then Nini has an effect where if it is equipped with an equip card, quick effect, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase, and you can only use this hard once per turn. And so this is a very nice quick effect removal effect that has a lot of synergy with some of the other cards. And Hair lets you search any of the other equip spells that are all very strong and very good to get to. Then for the ritual monster, Mikanko of the Ohime. This card is a ritual monster that you can ritual summon using the spell. And it cannot be destroyed by battle, also your point takes any battle damage you would take involving this card instead. Then, it has two effects that are both hard ones per turn. The first one is you can reveal it in your hand, then add a Mikanko card from your deck to your hand, then discard one card, effectively like a chalice line. Then the other effect is when it's on the field, you can quick effect, target one equip spell in your graveyard, and equip it to an appropriate monster on the field. And this is a very relevant effect. But the main one is that it lets you search any Mikanko card, and then discard, which can actually be advantageous as this can unbrick your hands and set yourself up even more than if it didn't discard. Now as for the spells, the quick base spell, the Great Mikanko of Legend, allows you to special summon a Mikanko monster from your hand, ignoring its summoning conditions, but return to the hand during your opponent's end phase. Then, during your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send one Mikanko card from your deck to the graveyard, and that's the effect. Now, not only does let you summon Mikankos from the hand, but you can also Foolish Burial. And you can use both of these in the same turn. So this card is incredibly strong for setting up basically everything you want to do. And it's a quick play spell, so you can use on the opponent's turn if you need to wall up or hell summon the ritual. Then, Blazing Dance of the Mikanko. And this is basically Premature Burial. Special summon one Mikanko monster from your hand or graveyard, and if you do, equip with this card, then, you can optionally special summon one monster from your opponent's graveyard to their field, but negate its effects. One thing to note about this, this does not target what monster it's summoning. So say if you're trying to summon a hare from the grave, but you have a Nini in the hand, if they DD Crow hare, you can just summon Nini from the hand and the effect continues to evolve. So that's very strong, and this gives the equipped monster card effect immunity. Then, Purifying Dance of the Mikanko. This can only be equipped to a Mikanko monster, and it cannot be destroyed by card effects. If a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target one monster you control and one monster your opponent controls, and return both of them to the hand, and this is a hard once per turn. This effect is very strong, especially with an effect like Nini, that allows you to take control of an opponent's monster, and then bounce them both. Basically, you don't lose any resources, but your opponent loses two. And then, as I said before, Arabesque of the Mikanko. Lets you special summon a Mikanko from hand or deck with a different name from the equipped monster, 
and then return the monster this card was equipped to to the hand, and this can be equipped to anything. Then, Inviting Rondo of the Mikanko. This card is Snatch Steel, but better. Almost. It allows you to equip to an opponent's monster and take control of it while you control the Mikanko monster, but it cannot activate its effects while you control it. When this card leaves the field, send the equipped monster to the graveyard, and you can only control one Inviting Rondo. So this card is very strong, because even if they get rid of the equip spell, they still lose their monster. And with the effect of, say, Mikanko of the Ohime, or Catfight, this can be used on the opponent's turn. So it's very strong. Now for the one ofs I'm running one Mikanko Kagura, the Ritual Spell. And this can be used to Ritual Summon any Mikanko Ritual Monster, and you just need to tribute monsters whose total levels equal or exceed the Ritual Monster. Then, you can apply the following effect. Destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of equip spells with different names in your graveyard, and if you do, inflict 1000 damage to your opponent for each card destroyed. So this is very strong. This can just wipe your opponent's board and maybe even kill them. And it's very strong against basically anything, and especially say back row matchups to wipe their back row. But it's at one because it's easily searchable, and, well, you're only going to want it when you have the ritual in the hand that searches the card. Then, one of this field spell, Doorway of the Celestial Mekanko. And this card basically enables your win con to be much easier. While you control a monster equipped with an equip card, your opponent's monsters must attack them if able. So they cannot choose not to. Then, if your Mekanko monster battles, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. And, if your Mikanko monster attacks at the end of the damage step, you can send one equip card you control to the graveyard, that monster can attack on a monster again. And, you can keep doing this as long as you have equip cards to control. So, this card basically lets you just kill your opponent out of nowhere. But I'm running at one because not only is it easily searchable, it's only really valuable when you're comfortably well set up, and you don't want to draw three or two of this card with no setup, then it's just terrible. Then, for the trap cards, I'm running one Mikanko Catfight, which, if you control a Mikanko monster, lets you to target one face-up monster on the field and equip it with an appropriate equip spell from your deck, namely Rondo or Arabesque. And, well, you can use those on the opponent's monster, or you can equip one of your other equips to your own monster, so it is a very versatile card. Then, if an equip spell is sent to your graveyard while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card then target one equip spell in your graveyard and add it to your hand, so this lets you even recover resources. And well, this card's very strong, but for some reasons for a virtual spell, you only really want it when you're well set up, and it's easily searchable. Then I'm running one Mikanko Promise, as this allows you to special summon one Mikanko monster from your hand or deck, but banish it when it's a field, then you can equip it with one appropriate equip spell from your hand or graveyard. So this card is very strong, it's like you just get any Mikanko out from deck and put an equip from your hand or grave. And this can definitely be useful in, say, later turns, if you've lost a lot of resources to summon one of your Mikankos and equip a good equip spell to it. But it's not so great to start off with unless you have the right equip spells, and it's really terrible if you already have both Mikankos on the field. So it's out one. Now, as for the Esold package, which, don't worry, does not do normally Zold things. This is very much fine-tuned to this deck. I'm running three Neo Space Connector, and one Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin as the standard one card Zold, and Aqua Dolphin's discard can come in handy. Then I'm running two Renowned, which might seem like a weird ratio, but I have reasons. Now that's where I'm running it. Well, not only is there a Fire Warrior in this deck that you're going to constantly want on the field, this deck also runs lots of equip spells that are easy to get in the grave that this recovers. And, well, this is your main Esold target, as this lets you do a combo line where if you summon Space Connector, you can get access to any of your Mikanko monsters and any of your equip spells. Now for two, well, it's so that if I draw a out, I still have a good target left in deck, and using this over the course of a duel later turns can be very strong to recover equip spells that are lost. And not only that, it's pretty easy to repeat this card, because if you use Arabesque, you can bounce it to your hand, and use it on the next turn. Now I'm running one Reinforced Army as it can search through most of the deck, three triple tactical talents, 
just because it's a generically good card, and two preparation of rights to search your extra monster. And as for the Isold, well, there's triple Isold. And, you know, self-explanatory this card allows you to, when it's summoned, search a warrior, but you can't use your rest of the turn, mostly for discard fodder, and then send any number of equips from different names your deck to grave, and summon a warrior from your deck whose level equals the number of cards. Mostly rain out, but this can even get out your hair if you need it. And the rest of the extra deck is pretty much fluff. A bunch of rank 3s you can maybe go into uh, an access code package, a Linkery Bow, and a Zeus. Now, as for a pretty solid starting hand, this one consists of a Mikanko the Ohime, a Purifying Dance, Mikanko Kagura, Reinforcing the Army, and Triple Tactics Talents. Now to start off with, I will go ahead and activate Reinforcing the Army to search out Neo Space Connector. This will allow me to go ahead and go into my Isolde line. Let's first have some Aqua Dolphin. I will not use its effect as I pretty much want all these cards in my hand. I'll go into Isold and use it to go ahead and search another Neo Space Connector for discard fodder, basically. Then, I will use Isold's effect, dumping Arabesque of the Mikanko to summon for my deck Renaud. Then, I will use Renaud to add Arabesque to my hand. The reason why I did that is because I can then equip Arabesque to Renaud, bounce it to my hand, and summon any Mikanko and equip it to it. This also triggers hair. This is a very strong interaction, as this gets out an Mikanko, and puts Renaud back in my hand for the following turns, to loop again and get another equip spell from my graveyard. Maybe even Arabesque to keep activating every turn, constantly getting out resources. In this case, I will then use Hair's effect to search my deck to my hand, Blazing Dance. Then, I will use Ohime, to add from my deck to my hand, Nini, and then immediately discard Nini, so I can go ahead and activate Blazing Dance to reborn it. I reborn Nini, equip Purifying Dance to it, and this is one of the inboards you can do. Another option I had is I could have kept the Nini in my hand, and then searched the Mikanko Trap card that allows me to equip an opponent's monster and then instead discard, say, the Neo Space Connector. This would give me an extra interruption at the cost of a card in my hand. And, well, in general, the deck is pretty malleable in what you want to do, because see, this hand is more comfortable with, say, summoning the Ritual Monster, but that one has the potential to make more interruptions and even get out the Ritual Monster by using the opponent's monster's material. Now, what does this deck do without Isolde? Well, Isolde is mostly a consistency booster, it can still look very good without it. Say in this replay, in which case I start off with using Great Mikanko of Legend to summon Nini to the field and tag position, then use Legend's effect to jump from my deck to the grave, Hair. I'll then use Blazing Dance to reborn Hair, and trigger Hair's effect to search my deck to my hand, Purifying Dance, and equip it to my Nini. And well, this end board is pretty good as this allows me to take control of an opponent's monster and imbalance a monster I control and an opponent's monster to the hand. Then on the following turn, I have a card like Arabesque and Blazing Dance to have follow-up. So, in conclusion, Mikankos are a pretty interesting deck. Uh, they have a lot of potential. As far as their issues, well, playing through certain kinds of disruption is awkward for the deck, and Easy access to just hard removal of opponent's cards is also not very easy to get a hold of. But the deck is pretty decently consistent and can do some interesting interruptions, like stealing opponent's monsters, and a lot of people would not expect your win condition, and if they don't read your cards fully, might just end up killing themselves by battling into them. 